you doing, sweetie? What you doing? As I was saying, you can tinker with one of these at the end till the cows come home and there will always be something left to fix. Some bit of drawing, some colored shape, some colors off. You just have to get to the point and say, well, that's it, especially for a demonstration. Before we talk about the demonstration and the ideas behind it, about Hawthorne and Henshaw, um, I want to preface all that first with this. I'm not a teacher, have never been one, have absolutely no interest in being one. I don't have enough of a bedside manner to be one. I'm not a handhold. Um, what I've tried to do all the material that's on this channel is to fulfill a promise to my mentor, Henry Henschen, that I would do what I could to help others understand what he taught and how he taught and why he taught it the way he did. So there's that. Unlike a number of Henry's students who he asked to teach others, um, he specifically asked me not to teach in order that I would have all of my time to develop myself. Uh, he even said that he would have been much further along in his own studies and accomplishments had he not spent those 70 summers teaching but he felt an obligation to continue Hawthorne's teaching and ideas, and luckily uh, he did, or none of us would know any of this. Um, so. We started this out the first day poking a little fun when I said there are no values, only color contrasts. Well, it happens to be a fact. The values system is a model. It was invented 500 years ago at a time when painters only had a half a dozen pigments at best. Black, a couple of earth colors, uh, earth yellow, uh, lead white, most anything else they had that was invented during the time were fugitive. Uh, da Vinci used a lot of fugitive colors that faded out within a couple of weeks, but he was always experimenting with stuff. That's beside the point. If you look at the physics of light, the energy that's pushing it, the amplitude,
and how long that stimulus stays upon the cones and the eyes and the sensors uh, determines both what color we see as well as the intensity of that color. There's no gray scale in nature. A color is a deeper color because of the wavelengths of light combined in that area as perceived by the eye and the perceptual areas of the brain. Um, some colors are paler and some colors are deeper, but there's a difference in the color. It's not a matter of being a difference in a value. better way to put that than deeper and paler is some colors are richer and some colors are less rich, less positive, let's say. Um, Henshi used to say that, uh, that your start should consist of positive colors. That means you look at a note, even if it looks off or nebulous, what's the most dominant aspect of it? Well, it's yellow, or it's blue, or it's green. And you would start with that level of intensity, that richness, or lack of richness, that paleness, for that area with that pigment. But on your study, it had to read as a positive color, not a gray washed out tone, or some kind of nondescript value of something. There's a, uh, obviously a blue shadow and obviously a rose light plane. Well, that's what you put down. Of course, there's so much more in there, you work your way up to it. Regardless of who it is or what they say, uh, not even Henry could nail a color right off. They have to be restated through observational comparisons to understand the relationships. Uh, so you're sneaking up on the color. But anyway. As the old saying goes, you can have every value in your painting supposedly observed from your subject, from nature. You can have every one of them absolutely correct in relation and every color on the painting be completely wrong and out of relation and having nothing to do with what was observed from nature. Uh, whereas the opposite is just the opposite. If the color is correct in relation, the value is automatically correct. Um, because you're dealing with the appearance of things, how this color relates to this color relates to this color, or this color relates to this color relates to this color. This color is not paler than that color, it's a different color. This is a, a, a pinky yellow and that's a green. Uh, what makes them appear lighter or deeper is because of the wavelength that are reflecting from that area to the eye, giving the appearance of that relationship. It's fairly impossible to get people who have always been attached to values to grasp and understand the idea of color contrasts unless and until they get their butts outside in the sunlight, look at a setup in complete honesty, not putting filters on what they see, and say, oh, that's yellow, that's red, that's green, that's blue, that's purple. That, that purple is almost as bright as the yellow, but it looks like a shadow compared to the yellow next to it. That's color contrast. That's the appearance of things as that stimulus is 
on the cones and that information is directed to the perceptual areas of the brain. Um, there's more to it than that, but so what Charles Hawthorne and especially Henry Henchy taught was color contrasts. A beginner was to do their utmost to get the shock of the light. Now, the shock of the light, where values are concerned, the largest shock is black against white. But that has nothing to do with what we're seeing. There, there's no black, there's black in outer space. But as long as there's atmosphere on the planet and lights illuminating that atmosphere, there are no absolute darks. Well, there's no absolute colors of any kind. No absolute white, no absolute black, no absolute red. Everything is relational. Um, that's another thing that a person comes to if they, as Henchy says, study in the right way. Observational comparisons of how the colors are related, mixing those colors as accurately as, as you can and put them in the proper places to, to where those things are related. Some may not, but a great many people do. When they start trying to translate a color that they see into the value they think they see, all sorts of commotions are going on within the conceptual thought process about how do I dull that? How do I gray it down? Uh, how do I make it deeper? So forth and so on. As opposed to, yeah, I see that's deeper than that. Well, what color is it? Well, it seems to be a blue violet with maybe just a tiny bit of green in it. And once that's laying next to this pinkish gray that's in the light, all of a sudden there's light and shade having nothing whatsoever to do with a value scale, but with how the colors contrast one to the other. The coolness in the one note amplifies the warmth in the other note and the reverse is also true that the warmth in the one note amplifies the cool in our eyes and our perception one next to the other it's those contrasting colors and how they relate to one another uh, that gives the illusion of dark and light plus as we were saying before all color is relational there are no absolutes. You've got a red pear over there. It's not painted with 12 shades of red. It's painted with 15 or 20 or 30 or 50 completely different colors that only relate to one another because of their intensities, um, the naturalness of their intensities as seen in the light. But a person is going, only going to understand that if they actually go through this process of uh, color masses, restating those masses, uh, major variations for the large planes, restating those until that is as well related as possible, and then the minor variations as well related as they can be. And if they are well related enough, then the light key itself develops on its own without us having to think about it all that much. It's, it's just, there's too much to what Henchy taught to try to explain it in words or with one demonstration. We'll go back to a couple things. Um, a group of perceptual psychologists, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, did a sur survey of painting going back 500 years. And they found all sorts of things, but one of the major conclusions that they came to was this. 97% of painters that have lived over this period of the last 500 years were pictorialists. 
The other 3% were structuralist. Henchy was a structuralist. Damn few are. It requires that a person be able to both comprehend and see three-dimensionally. See in depth, see forms, as he used to like to say, the rotundity of the forms, the weight and volume of the form. To be able to perceive that through the eye, through perception, um, it's both an innate thing, but it can also be learned. And the way he structured his teaching, there's a lot in there that allows a person to be able to learn to see three-dimensionally and think three-dimensionally. That's the point of working in planes. It's the same thing as sculpting in clay, only you're sculpting in color. Uh, different color planes. You go back through this demonstration and through some of the others, you see at the beginning, large masses, shock of the light, then the half-light plane, a few major variations. They're all chunk, 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 chunk. And of course, uh, even some of Hinchy's own students, the ones who didn't understand, say really ignorant, stupid things like, eh, but they look so unnatural. Well, that's because they think that conventional drawing is the foundation of painting. It's not. Color relationships are the foundation of painting. That's how we see. We see in color, we see in forms, we see in volumes. We do not see in outlines of any perimeter whatsoever because no object is separate from any other object. They're in the same light. They reflect and re-reflect off of one another until it's one mass volume, singular volume of light. Um, that's Henchy's three-dimensional color composition. It's pushing far enough in the relationships that the entire scene or subject is engulfed in the same quality of light. Um, we'll try to get to the point of demonstrating some of that also and some later things. Go back through this one, start at the beginning, see how it's laid out, how the major planes, the minor planes, how it was only after I worked on this five or six times that I began to see the light key itself. That's when all this warmth came in and the turning of the edges as a turn away, a turn away from the eye. Um, the next demonstration is going to be very elementary and very overcolored. We'll start back at square one. But any of those of you who are actually seriously interested, uh, look at back through the videos on this channel, and there's one with a free download of the color study PDF. It's uh, 160, 180 pages that goes through the Hawthorne Henchy history, shows how it's different from the traditional tonalist and value-based painting. And there are hundreds of illustrations as well as a demonstration that starts with the, with the initial overcolored masses goes through the restatements and the refinements, major variations, minor variations, all the way to the end. So if you're actually serious about trying to do this yourself, that's the place to start with that free download of the Color Study PDF. Um, and then there are various other videos on there uh, that try to show how we go about this. There aren't any shortcuts. I've had some people ask, why don't you edit more and make these things shorter? Well, for one thing, there's a damn fast forward button on your computer, on your mouse. You can run these videos as fast or go to any spot on them that you want to. That's not the point. The point of showing them in real time is to get people to understand that this requires effort and concentration and developing one's skill as well as one's perception. Those who are only interested in making a picture or doing an illustration or expressing themselves, go find something else to do. This is not going to help you, it's only going to aggravate you.
lastly today, uh, touch on a couple more things. Um, one is, I'm certainly not trying to sell you anything. This is all about ideas. Um, ideas about how an individual by themselves can develop their skills and their perception um, in a way that is basically not being taught anywhere. The other thing is that it's been put out there these last several years so that you don't have to go pay somebody a bunch of money to go to their damn workshop or buy their damn video that is not going to help you all that much. It may get you started on something going this direction or that direction or this direction or that direction. But if you do follow along and come to understand Henchy's color study approach, you will be able to teach yourself because the light in nature is what's going to teach you. The colors that are there in front of you and you trying to nail down what they are, that's going to teach you. Most people don't follow through on this. Uh, Henchy taught for 70 years and probably 95% of the people he taught did not follow through with what he taught them. Um, it's the old many are called but few are chosen. Everybody is so enthusiastic. Oh yo, yeah, you know, hit your color, blah, 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 blah. But when you get out there in the hot sun and sweat's running down in your eyes, most people get to grumbling and finally just say, screw this, and they stop. They don't, they don't take it any further. Um, or they do what a majority of people have done that studied with the old man, is that they take what they learned about color and they decorate their values or decorate their drawing with it, which is a couple of things he absolutely despised. Um, academic approach dressed up in colors. It's a decorative approach. With Henchy, color is structural because the light is structural. There's form, the system, it, 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 it all relates one to the other. Um, but I'll let y'all off now. No, I won't carry on any further sermon. Um, but the point is, you've got to be serious. Uh, you've got to invest a lot of time and a lot of effort. And you have to be, above all else, self-critical. But it's self-critical with, with detachment. It's not about you. It's not about your damn little petty-ass, pissy feelings. It's about you developing to be all that you can be perceptually. And with the potential of maybe one of these days, you might be able to do something that might be called art by others. But you don't, you should never even consider that. All you can sh should consider is, am I making progress? Are these masses better? Are these masses in relation closer to a light key than the ones I've done up to this point? That's progress if they are. The major plane variations, is that giving me more structure and more form? Which one of them's, one of these are out of whack? Have I become, have I come to the point to where I can accurately restate those few to bring things into relation? That's progress. That's all there is is progress. I've been at this for 53 years, but I'm a dumbass. Um, it's only been in the last five or six that I came to understand everything that Henry taught me. So I'm trying to make it simpler and more direct to where the people who want to give it some sincere effort um, will have enough guidance to be able to do it for themselves. Because in the end, regardless of 
what teacher you go to, you do it yourself on your own.